I thank you, Jesus, because that all power has been given unto you in heaven and in earth. God, there is nothing too big, there is nothing too hard for you. God in heaven, we just love you. God, we love you. God, we love you. God, we praise you. Father, Lord, we just thank you, God, for all of your goodness. Lord, touch us tonight and let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Father in heaven, we're fell to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Remain standing. Let's worship the Lord through song. Praise the Lord. In the hymnal tonight, page 92. Just a little talk with Jesus. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to his name. Is he worthy of your praise? He's worthy of all of our praise. Let everything that hath breath pray. Oh, we better get started all over again. Let everything that hath breath Praise ye the Lord. So why are we here? Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't see anybody purple. I see everybody sitting up and breathing, so we should be praising the Lord tonight. God is so good to us. Thank God for His goodness. Amen. Sometimes you can look around and uh, you know say, Lord, I, I'm really having a rough time. And I got an email that started stating how many people in Manatee County alone felt very insecure about the amount of food they had. Yeah. Worried about if they're going to have food tomorrow to eat. And it really surprised me to see how many adults in Manatee County go to bed yeah. unsecure yeah. about food. And I was praying today and I said, I thank you, Lord. Yes. Because you know, tomorrow if I get up and I don't eat nothing, it's going to be by my choice. Yeah. Yeah. God has made that provision and I'm not worried about eating. I sometimes look and say, Lord, i got enough reserves to last me a few days in here. <laughs> God's good to us. I mean, God's good to us. You know, we, we should not be grumblers. We should not be complainers. We should lead the world in thanksgiving unto God, looking and considering the blessings that God has bestowed upon every one of us. Oh, we're so blessed, so blessed. I heard a guy talking this past week about people that he knew that would buy us clothes and said, wouldn't even take the tag off of them. So they wear them one time and leave them in the closet. And, and they want to go buy them more. So buy them matching shoes to go with them and, and all this stuff. And then after that, with them, we, we talk about, you know, I need this and I need that. What we need to do is be thankful to God for what we have. Amen. Be thankful to God for the blessings that God has bestowed upon. We're blessed, aren't we? Are you blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands to Jesus and say, Lord, I love you and thank you for all your blessings tonight. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ushers are coming tonight to wait upon you as we worship the Lord through giving. I want to thank every one of you for the way that you have been giving unto God. And let me just encourage you to be obedient unto the Lord in all of your giving. God loves a cheerful giver, don't he? God loves a cheerful giver. And if we will give unto the Lord, then God is going to reach down and He'll He'll take and meet our needs. He will supply our needs. Brother Simmons, pray for us tonight, please. Father God, we're so thankful tonight for that time here to come worship you in spirit and in truth, God. God, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for all the things you've done for each and every one of us. God, I pray for the church. God, I pray for my pastor, each and his wife, his whole family. God, I pray for each and every family here tonight that has those that are unlost. God, I pray for. God, go with us. Keep us in your divine hands day by day. God bless the offering. Use it for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you tonight for giving it to the Lord. 
this coming Sunday, it's going to be a widow widowers get together for Christmas, and uh, we appreciate everyone that chose a name. But please have the gifts turned in by Sunday morning. If you can't, do it a little sooner, okay? And you're making Sister Joan nervous. And I don't blame her. I would be nervous too. So uh, let's just uh, really work together. We do appreciate everyone that just jumped in and, and uh, chose names. And we do appreciate that so much. And let's just uh, keep praying for our widows and widowers. Uh, I will tell you this, that I, I know that a lot of people have lost companions, and children, and friends, and loved ones. And just since I've been here in three years, it, it's just, it's its almost at times when you start thinking about it, you don't want to think about it. But you know, God is the one that gives us peace through the midst of everything that we go through. And I thank God for that peace. And let's, let's pray that God will help us to be the healing hands that uh, God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Please be sure that you pick up a bulletin, see the things that's going on in the month of December. Can you believe it's already December? It's going to be here and gone before you know it. Uh, go ahead and start planning on this, though. The last Sunday night of December, it's going to be New Year's Eve. We're going to have our fifth Sunday sing, and then we're going to have a time of uh, refreshments. The Lighthouse Cafe is going to be serving that night. Our ladies' ministry, and we just want you to plan on coming on out here and being with us on that time. Well, I want to tell you tonight that God's good to us. Amen. Have I already told you that? Yes. Is God good to you? Amen. You've already asked me that. Have you ever thought though, so many times it's so easy for us to get our minds upon our burdens and our troubles? Have you ever stopped to think a lot of times the reason why we get in trouble is because we don't take the time to pray? And inquire of God. And I'm going to take you into the word of the Lord. And I want to read to you a passage of scripture. Coming from 1 Samuel chapter 30. And it's a, it's, a, it's a passage of scripture here about David. That I preached on. And you've heard preached on. But I think it's so important that we inquire of the Lord. On what that God would have us to do. As you're going there tonight. I want you to listen to the words of this old song. That says when he was on the cross. I was on this mind. Oh, man. 
amazing that he still loved us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. received him not and he knew that was going to happen and yet he still loved him. And he still loved you and I knowing that we would falter, we would fail, we would slip, we would make mistakes. He still loves us through it all. It's hard to describe a love like that. Hallelujah. Going tonight to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 and I want to read verses 1 through 8. A very familiar story here. This is going to be the place that we're going to start tonight. And I want to ask you the question, do you inquire of the Lord? Do you inquire of the Lord? Do you stop long enough to ask God for His direction? Do you stop long enough to say, God, I cannot do this without you. I need help along this way. In verse number 1 of 1 Samuel chapter 30, it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. That's something hard for me to imagine in my mind. Yet it still goes on today. David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. They were broken. I mean, they were broken. They had already cried until there was no more tears to cry. Then look what happened. I will said, David, his two wives were taken captive, Hinnadom and the Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly 
distressed. You been there? Yeah. You just been absolutely just bottomed out? Yeah. You don't know what to do? David said, I'm here. Yeah. For the people spake of stoning him. Yeah. It's not enough that you lost your wives and your kids. Now the people want to kill you. I'm learning more and more. Don't ask. What's next? Yeah. Don't ask and it get worse. You don't want the answer to that. And I was, I would just imagine that David was thinking, Lord, can it get any worse that they've taken my wives, taken my kids? And now the people want to stone him. Seems like it got a little worse, don't it? Because the soul of it, all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And David said to Abathur the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathur brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Father, I give you praise and glory and honor tonight. I know that you're the God that is with us. You're the God that goes before us. And you are the God that has our back. I thank you tonight because that God that where it looks like the enemy might have won. God, you said, but yet my hand is still with you. And I will allow you to take back that which the devil has taken from you. I thank you tonight because that you're a God that can make that devil pay back with dividend. I know that God that you can cause him to restore unto your people sevenfold that which he has taken. God, I pray tonight for your people to be encouraged. I pray, Lord, that we will learn tonight to inquire at the hand of the Lord to see what God has to say about the matter. Father, let us inquire of you tonight. And Jesus will fail not to give you the praise in thy holy name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a story. What a story. I, I want you to understand tonight that just because that you're doing the will of God and you know that you've been chosen to do things, it does not give us the right to go on without inquiring of the Lord. I want to say that again. I want that to get into your heart. Just because you're doing the will of God and you know that you've been chosen by God does not give you free reign to go and do as you please without inquiring at the hand of the Lord. It is so important for us to go back and pray. There's been a lot of men that have made fatal mistakes while pursuing the will of God because they did not take the time to stop and pray. God only knows how many ministers have fallen by the wayside working 60, 80 hours a week in the house of God, in the church, doing the will of God, not having enough time to have that personal relationship and having that time to inquire of the Lord and they would lose out. You and I, today in our life, we can make mistakes and we will make mistakes, but they could be fatal if we do not inquire at the hand of God on what that we should be doing. In fact, you may still be trying to live the will of God, but you've not asked God how to do it. Think about it for a moment. There's so many people saying, I want to work for God, but then they don't go and ask God, what should I do? David learned that in a very early age of his life. Take time to inquire of the Lord. See, there's, there's a lot of different ways that people can go. We're all trying to reach the same goal, and that goal is heaven. When we get to heaven, we all want to hear Jesus say, well done. Right. Am I right? Yes. All right, well, let's just say that we're all headed to Chick-fil-A. Okay? Not now. But if you want to go to Chick-fil-A, there's several ways to get there. That's right. Not everybody's going to go to Chick-fil-A the same way, and especially if you're racing trying to get there. There could be several ways. There could be ways with fewer turns, different speed limits along the way. 
But I'm trying to tell you that in this way that we're going, trying to reach the goal, God wants you and I to stop and inquire, yeah, yeah. which way should we go? Yeah. How should we go? Whenever we go back here to this story, I know you know that God had already spoken unto David and David was to be the next king over Israel. Sometimes if you're not careful, we begin to feel like, God, I know where I'm headed. And since I know where I'm headed, I should not have any troubles or trials. Forget that. That's false doctrine. Okay, that's not what the word of God teaches you. In fact, when God calls you, he starts equipping you by troubles and trials. You don't like that? I don't like that. But trials strengthen our faith. That's right. Tribulation strengthens your faith. Does not make you like it anymore. Just like that a bodybuilder, he wants to have all the strength. He wants to have all the looks. Well, if that bodybuilder is going to do what he wants to or look like he wants to, he's going to have to pay the price, right? As a child of God, if we want to grow in the Lord, then we're going to have to pay the price. People today that have strong faith are normally people that have walked through things you and I do not desire to walk through. I mean storms and troubles and trials along this way. But yet God has brought them through. David knew that he had been called to be king over Israel. He did not know on the road to being king over Israel he would face so many disappointments. He would face so much discouragement. And I'm not trying to discourage you tonight. I'm trying to tell you as a child of God, this is part of the walk that we walk with the Lord. You're going to have troubles and trials. He said his people are going to be a tried people. His people are going to be a proven people. Just like Job was tested and tried and proven. And Job cried. Job said, Job said they're hurting. He sat there in misery. He sat there without friends. He sat there without family. He was alone. He went through so many things. But whenever you look at the end of it, Job would tell you it's worth it all. He'd also still tell you, I still miss my sons and I still miss my daughters. But I know that God brought me through that for a reason and a purpose. And, and so many times in my life, God has reminded me, I'm not just taking you through this for you. I'm taking you through this for other people I'm going to put in your life. And they're going to need to know that there is a God that's going to bring them through just like I have taken you. And your faith is going to be strong. And they're going to glean off of your faith. They're going to pick up those handfuls of purpose that you're going to leave behind for them. And they're going to say, as God was with him, so God is with me. I'm telling you, God's not wanting us to be selfish. And if you're going to live for God, God's going to knock the selfishness out of you. This thing is not about you. It's not about me. It's all about Jesus Christ and Him being lifted up and exalted. And knowing that God is God and His ways are still perfect. God help us tonight. David knew that he, he had been chosen he knew that God had given him the power to win from past experiences. There's a lot of things that I can stop here and just preach for several moments on. Many times when you're facing a new trial, you forget what God's done for you in the past. Don't forget what God did for you yesterday. Remember that because you're going to need to know the same God of yesterday is the God of today. The God that brought you through your last valley. He's with you in this valley. But Brother Stroud, this one is darker. This one's bigger. This one's wider. This one's deeper. But God is still God. I hold to a passage of scripture often where that I've read so many times as you have. That all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And I also think about what the Lord began to speak unto the people. He said, you can try to hide in the depths of the sea. You can try to hide in the clefts of the rocks. You can ascend wherever that you may want to go. He said, but I want to tell you that my hand is right there with you. You may want to live upon the space station in outer space, but you're not going to get away from God. 
If you want to be the first one to go to Mars and try to live on Mars, uh, you're not going to get away from God. I'm telling you, you will not go anywhere where God is not. He is an omnipresent God. He not only feels this... Uh, he not only fills this earth, he fills the universe, he fills the Milky Ways, hallelujah. He is God greater than what we can comprehend in our little on our minds tonight. Yes. And we have to realize that David knew that God had given him the power to win. But just because he had the power to win did not mean he did not have to fight. Amen. There's a message right there. I can win this and get up and fight. I don't like to fight. I used to tell them coming up, I said, I don't like to fight. And the reason is, if I hit somebody, they're going to hit me back. And I don't like to be hit. I don't like to hurt. You can say, well, you're just a wimp. No, I thought I was pretty smart. You think about it. You know, that guy's just going to stand there and just let you pound his face. That's one thing. But if he's going to try to pound your face back, think twice before you hit him. <laughs> David knew God had given unto me the power to win. But it did not eliminate the fight. That's right. And so that's the reason why that David would inquire of the Lord. And you can say what you want to, though it's not written, I believe that David inquired of the Lord on how shall I take down Goliath. I know that God that you was with me, you came upon me, and I was able to slay the lion, I was able to slay the bear, but God, this is a big giant right here. How am I going to go against him? And I believe that God put it in his little mind, said, you are a shepherd boy, and don't run away from what you are right now. He said, I am going to make you the king. I'll make you a great warrior, but right now you're just a shepherd boy, so I want you to pick up the tools of a shepherd, and you're going to use the tools of a shepherd to slay a giant. Man. Lord, there's some preaching material here. Some of you are looking and saying, I cannot take down this giant. His brothers were saying, David, you can't do it. The king was saying, David, you can't do it. After all, he is a man of war from his youth, and you're nothing but still a youth. You're still a boy just in training. In fact, boy, you've never even gone to boot camp. The only thing you've ever done has been out there taking, around, taking care of those old stinky smelling sheep. And you can do whatever you want to with him. But this is a giant. But I want to tell you with what God has given unto you, be comfortable and know that it's not within your power that you're going to win, but it's going to be God fighting through you. And if all you have is a sling and a stone, then God's going to use the sling and the stone. But don't be afraid, not because you know what you're doing, but because you know who is walking with you. And he said, I will not leave you. I'm not going to forsake you in the time of your battle. He knew that God had already given him favor with people. He knew that they had already begun to sing songs about him. And now he found some people that didn't like him. I don't know about you. I'd rather be around people that like me. Amen. 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 I'd rather be around people that like me. When I get around people that don't like me, I, I just want to go on. I just want to say, that. that's your loss. And, and I, I'm just trying to go on, you know, just out of the way. I, and I believe that David knew in his heart, God, I'm at a place right now that these people are hurting. My Lord, help me here tonight because there's some people in your life that still love you. There's people in your life tonight that still care for you. But a lot of times because of the hurts and the pains that they are feeling. I, I don't know how many of you watched the interview today. Uh, with the with the mayor of Tampa and with the chief of police and, and they was talking about catching the murder, you know, over there in Tampa. And I, I realized that whenever they started to bring one of the gentlemen from the family up there to the microphone, that, that chief began to remind them, said, we know that he has said some statements. Uh, and we know that, that some of the things that he has said actually was against the police because he did not think that they were doing his job. But he told those reporters, said, you have to remember that this man right here has been hurting. He has lost a son. And I want to tell you, he defended that man and told those reporters, be very careful about what you have to ask him. You know what he's saying? Whenever a man is hurting, whenever a man is wounded, whenever that man's heart is broken within him, he's going to say things and he's going to do things. 
And yeah, it may not come out right, but I'm telling you, they are hurting. There's one thing I learned about being raised up on a farm, that you can take an animal that is just as kind and gentle as can be. You can take an animal in which that really you can lead anywhere that you want to lead them. But whenever that animal gets hurt, that animal, that animal becomes very defensive, and they will hurt you though you're trying to help them along the way. We've had cows that were hurting and, and we tried to help them and then they wanted to butt you and they wanted to kick you. We had horses that had been called in barbed wire and all the time, you know, you can run up there, pick up their feet and everything else but now that barbed wire is around them and, and they've been hurt and they don't want you to touch their feet no more. My Lord, church, will you please hear what this little preacher is trying to tell you tonight? There's a hurting world out there and right now they don't need somebody that's going to hate them because they they feel like they've been hated. And because they feel like this world's dumped on me. And like one lady I heard say, I don't know what I've done wrong to deserve all of this. Honey, you might not have done anything wrong. It might be a valley. It might be a trial. But there may be somebody that God's got in your life right now that he is telling you, you need to inquire of me. Don't listen to what they're saying. They are hurting. They are wounded. They are crying. They are lost. They're going through a time of despair but I'm going to use you to keep your senses up and to stay focused upon me and you call upon the people of God and say let's inquire of the Lord and let's see what God has to say. Let's see where God wants us to go and that's what David did that day when 400 men wanted to stone him. He looked around to the priest and said hey come here bring me the ephod. It's time for us to call upon God and did you notice what happened? He did not start saying, God, I need you to take care of these people that are hurting. No, no, no. My Lord, you talking about a leader? He said, I've got to get their mind off of their losses and get their minds back upon their winning. I owe God help us tonight to get our minds off of our losses, off of our past, and get our mind back upon what God wants to do for us tomorrow. How that God's going to make us a winner in the future. And David is saying, I've got to inquire of God. And he said, God, shall I pursue them and shall I overtake them? He didn't say, God, do I need to run back to a cave? Whenever God said go, not only did he go, but those men that wanted to stone him said, David, we're going with you. Are you getting the picture tonight? There's some people that would get back up on their horse if you just get back on your horse. If you would just inquire of the Lord, some people would get back in there with you. And because of that, God restored unto him his family. God restored unto him his wives, his children, all those things that had been taken, stolen. God gave him the hearts of the men back. I think those guys started looking at him and saying, truly the hand of God is upon this man. He was not afraid of our words when we wanted to kill him. He acted like it wasn't bothering him. I'm not saying it wasn't bothering him because David was just as much of a man as you and I are human beings tonight. And I'll tell you this much. He said, I shall inquire of the Lord. And I'm going to see what God has to say and what God tells me to do. That is what I'm going to do. Several years ago, we had a state overseer. And in one of the meetings that we had, it was Larry Timmerman. He said... Gentlemen, you have to remember that assumption is the lowest form of knowledge that a man can have. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. To assume anything. He said, you just don't assume nothing. Right. We're guilty of that, aren't we? I thought you was going to do it. I thought they were going to do it. And so we just start assuming things. But one thing I've learned throughout God's word, whenever that you stop inquiring of God, you start assuming things. You just start assuming God's still with you. You start assuming that you're going to have the victory. And I want to share with you an illustration here coming from Joshua. Because the time where that we are the most vulnerable to start assuming are the times of our greatest victories in our life. Where that we just feel like that God is with us no matter what we do. But understand this. 
God is with us whenever we're doing His plan, yeah. not our plan. That's, That's right. Whenever God's in control, He is the one that blesses us. Whenever we take control, then it's up to us to have our own blessings. So whenever you start just assuming, that's whenever God steps back and lets you learn a very valuable lesson in your life. If you go to the book of Joshua, chapter 2, you're going you're gonna to see where it was very easy for Joshua and all of Israel to become proud, to become arrogant. I, I mean, now you, you think about it. Before that, they have crossed over Jordan. They've already taken down some of the greatest kings that lived in that time. Whenever they cross over Jordan, the waters stand up. And they go across on dry land. We're special. See what I'm saying? Whenever they get across and they get to the other side. Do you remember Rahab? Do you remember the woman that took in the spies? I want you to listen to what that she had to say in Joshua chapter 2 and verse 10. It said, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sahan and Og, whom you destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. I could see pride swelling all inside of them. These people are afraid of us. They're afraid of you because God is with you. They're actually afraid of what God has been doing for you. And when we start taking the glory on for ourselves, that's where pride slips in. And look what else began to say it or be heard in these words. She said, neither did there remain any more courage in any man. I mean, our, our, our men are now like children. They don't want to fight. They're afraid to fight. They know they're going to lose because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. And you know, whenever we begin to, a lot of times we can put that last little phrase on there. And we can say, did God be given all the glory? But if you're not careful, your heart's doing that little extra beat. And your head's blowing up a little bit more with pride. And you're thinking, boy, I tell you what, I am something. Why? Because of what God's doing. It's God that's really something. It's God that's really great. It's God that's really powerful. What was the downfall of Satan? He wanted to take God's glory. I, you know, he, he didn't want to reflect the glory of God. He wanted God's glory. And if you're not careful, the devil, he, he literally sets you up. And then he throws you under the bus. Pride God before destruction. Holy Spirit before a fall. It's written in God's word. But how do we get to that place? We started out so humble. We started out so meek. And my mind goes way back into the church of God history. Where that the churches could not even afford to build a church. I mean, they would take palmetto uh, fans and they would take cabbage tree limbs and, and they would build them little buildings and they would gather up underneath of those things in those little bull rush buildings. And there they would have prayer meeting and there they would call upon God. 
Or maybe somebody would say, hey, you can come over to my house and, and we'll all get together. They didn't have enough money to build a church. And the churches that they were building, they were finding the cheapest piece of ground. And normally they would tell you it was on the wrong side of the tracks. And I'm not talking about color-wise. I'm telling you they were, they were built in places of poverty. But there were people in there that said God is the greatest. And they humbled themselves in prayer. And God began to bless them. And the churches began to grow. And they began to exceed the capacity of their buildings. And the finances began to come in. And so bigger churches were built. And the next thing you know is to the people humbling themselves in prayer. They're walking down the aisles in pride and their heads are full of, of, of thin air because it's no longer the Holy Ghost in there. And they're walking around saying, Thus saith the Lord. And the Lord's not even speaking no more. And God's walked out of the sanctuary and the people cannot even discern that God's walked out of the sanctuary. And you say, Preacher, that's not biblical. I'm telling you it is biblical because these men of Israel Israel allowed the same thing to happen to them. Yeah, but Brother Spallin, God gave them the bread because they inquired of the Lord and took Jericho as God told them to take it. But after Jericho, Joshua, the elders, and all of the priests, you never read one time. Or that they said, uh, let's call for the linen and thought, uh, let's build us an altar, let's sacrifice unto God tonight, and let's ask God, uh, what shall we do about AI? No, 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 because boy, we're big, we're bad, we're mean, we're ugly, and people are scared to death of us. Uh, Sahan and Og is dead, and all of those people, uh, the hearts of the Canaanite people are melting. Uh, why do I need to inquire of God? God said he's going to give me the victory. God said he's going to give me the land. That's right, but you better not get off the map. You cannot get off of the program of God. You've got to go back and inquire of the Lord. Listen to me. I believe with all of my heart, if they would have spent that evening in prayer and saying, God, what shall we do? That God would have told them, Joshua, you stand still and you don't go anywhere because there's sin in the camp and I'm not going to bless you until you take care of the sin in the camp. But they did not do that. Why? Because whenever you get pride and you get arrogant and you get proud, I'll tell you what happens then. You become sanctimonious religious people and you feel like there cannot be no sin and there's no unrighteousness and there's no ungodliness and surely everybody here is holy. My friend, that's a lie out of hell. I'm going to tell you every one of us are fighting the devil. Every one of us is coming against the powers of hell and if there's ever been a time that we need to stop and inquire of the Lord and say, my God, shake my tree and you show me what needs to take place. I've got to have a fresh anointing. I've got to have another move of God. I've got to have another song to sing and I can't do it until I feel your presence and know the direction that you want me to go in. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. glory. They didn't have time to inquire of God that night, did they? And so the next day, the next day, trucking. We're not asking God, should we march around like we did? Jericho. Oh, my Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Please help me. Could it have been? Could it have been, Brother Ed? They got up that next morning and said, we don't have to do AI like we did Jericho. Follow me. Could it be? We got to the place where that we're saying the same thing that we don't have to do what we used to do. Yeah. We don't have to pray. We don't have to inquire of the Lord and say, God, shall we march around the walls? What is your plan? Mm -hmm. Or have we just stepped up and said, no, nah, that's a bunch of nonsense to march around these walls six days. 
Number one, they were marching in obedience. And they were marching in obedience because God had spoke to them and told them what to do. God hadn't told them what to do about Ai. They just assumed that as God was with us, but we don't need to do like we did at Jericho now. You know, we, we don't need to spend all that time. Don't worry about bringing the priests out. Don't worry about bringing the trumpets out. Because we're not going to need all that praise. We're not going to need all that hollering. You know what I love to see God do to some of you? Preacher, you're sounding mean now. I like to see God get a hold of some of you and make you just squeal. Make you holler. Because of the power of God so strong upon you. And some of you may say, Preacher, that used to happen to me. How did it make you feel? I tell you, no doubt, if you would testify to the truth, you say, I'd go home that night feeling like I'd won a million dollars. I felt like I, I was more rich and more wealthy than the richest people upon the face of this earth because I had a divine visitation from God. God came down and touched me. Then why are we selling for anything less? I say, church, if we need to go back and march around the walls of Jericho and if we need to get the priests back up and get the trumpets back up to their lips, I say, God, help us to get the priests back together and get the trumpets back together and help us, God, to get the choir back together. God, help us to get the prayer warriors back together. Yeah. Come on church. I'm talking about prayer warriors. People who's not afraid to come against the devil. People that's not a... So, so many times you know you start saying I plead the blood I plead the blood and people start looking at you like what are you lost your mind or something or else if somebody starts saying I rebuke you devil in the name of Jesus where is he at and everybody wants to get me a friend my friend I'm going to tell you I came up in it many of you were brought up in it many of you used to walk the aisles of the church and rebuke the devil and plead the blood of Jesus and speak Jesus all over the sanctuary and Jesus showed up in the morning service and Jesus showed up in the afternoon service services uh, and Jesus showed up in the midweek services uh, and Jesus showed up in people's homes uh, I say church if God wants us to go back to walk in the aisles and pleading the blood and rebuking the devil then God put the church back around the walls of Jericho again uh, we thought we gotta have that anointing we gotta have the power we gotta have the instructions of God God help us they did not inquire of God and so the next day, innocent men, 36, died because they did not inquire of the Lord. They did not inquire of the Lord. I believe that if we would really stop long enough to go back to really pray for our personal lives and the church, say, God, you show us what to do. We need direction that comes from heaven. Brother Rick, there's times in the morning I, I, I tell God, I say, God, I don't know what I'm going to have to do today. I don't know the decisions I'm going to have to make. I need your wisdom. I need your knowledge. <coughs> Sometimes I, I just don't have the time, you know, just to sit down and try to analyze everything else. So, sometimes decisions have to be made. God, help me. I'm inquiring now. I need instructions. I need directions. I need to know that you're with me. You know, I don't know what all of you are going through tonight. But if there's one thing I do know, it doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. You go through things where that you need God to give you direction. You may be a grandparent. You may be a great, great grandparent. You may say, Preacher, I, I've got great, 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 great kids. But I want to tell you that there's things in your kid's life and there's things in your life that somebody needs to inquire yeah. of the Lord over. Yes. We, we, cannot, we cannot allow pride to come into a story that we just say, we can do it and God's going to take care of it. God will take care of it if we will inquire of Him and listen to Him That's right. and be obedient unto Him. Oh, there's a lot more I can preach here tonight, but I need, I need to stop right here. And I want to give you an opportunity tonight to inquire of the Lord. I need to give you an opportunity to, to get to the place to where that one more time that you really can inquire of God. 
Some people used to really pray. You know, they prayed out loud. Mm -hmm. We've gotten to the place now where that, I guess that we've gone into the silent mode. But I can promise you this. Are you still listening to me? Yeah. After 36 men died, they found time to inquire of the Lord then. Yeah. Moses went, or Joshua went back. I mean, he's ready to quit. I know how he's feeling. You've had all these great victories and then you've got one defeat. And you don't know how to handle defeat. Victory's a whole lot easier to deal with. That's right. Somebody say amen. You know I'm telling you the truth. You like to know that you won. Anybody here ever watch college football? Yeah. I thought so. I, I know some of you may not like football. All right, wait till the last quarter. Okay? Wait till the last quarter. In fact, if you if you want to surf the channels until they're like down to the last minute of, of the time plan, okay? And then they begin to throw the cameras around on the winning team. These guys are sitting over on the sideline. I thought some of you watched it. You know good and well they're not sitting on the sideline in the last minute. And especially whenever they're winning by 20 points. What are they doing? They're jumping up and down and acting like clowns. Right? And then the camera goes over to the team that's behind 20 points. Right. Yeah. There's not a smile. There's not a high five. I, I mean, there's nothing. People can handle winning far better than they can losing. Joshua faced defeat and didn't know what to do. And God said, good. Because this is what you should have been doing all along. Is inquiring of me. Joshua, get up. They're sent in the camp. Whenever you do what I tell you to do, then I'm going to turn back the blessings on you and you're going to go back and you're going to win. But you're not going to do it whenever you don't inquire of me. Now, I, I wish I could stop right there. But you go on and read a little bit further because it wasn't long after that until once again, after a few more victories, I got just relaxed. The Gibeonites moved in. Lied to them. And they believed their lies and made a league with them. Yeah. Read it. Whenever you stop inquiring of God, the devil will move into your camp to make a league with you. Yeah. You better stand because I could go on and do some more preaching. Wow. I want us to do I want us to do some praying right here. Some of you can say, Brother Spellin, I remember whenever I had the victory. Victory, Lord, the victory was ours. Where's it at tonight? Have we stopped inquiring of God? If someone would come to the piano for me tonight, I just, I just want to ask the rest of you, if you will. Will, will you just find your place to pray? Would you? Come on. Find your place to pray. And this is what I want you to do tonight whenever you pray. Say, God, show me what I need to do. Speak to my heart, God. How, how can I go take AI? How can I take the next city? How can I win the next battle? God, how can I get my next victory? Please, God, show me what I need to do. I'm inquiring of you, Lord. I'm inquiring of you. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart tonight. God, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, God. Please to God. Oh, sweet Holy Ghost. Speak to us tonight, Lord. Speak to us tonight, Lord. Speak to us. Oh, God, speak to us. Speak to us, Holy Ghost. Speak to us. God, speak to us. 
speak to us, God. Speak to us, Lord. Oh, God, let us inquire of you. Let us shine through the I'm 
getting it all back together. And uh, let's pray that God will just really move in the services. Uh, that's what it's all about. We need to move the Holy Ghost upon us in a very special way. I'm going to give you something to think about. If you was going to give a gift to Jesus this season, what would you give? The first thing that came to my mind is what do you give a person that already has everything? But I want you to think about that. I want you to pray about that. Lord, what kind of a gift could I give you for Christmas? What could I give the Lord for Christmas this year? Will you stand with me? I've often said come Christmas time, it's kind of strange. It's Jesus' birthday party, and most of the time he's left out of the party. And I want Jesus to be involved in Christmas with me this year. Hallelujah. Brother Ed, will you pray for us? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your powerful word this night, God. Thank you for your presence, your almighty presence, God. Heavenly Father, let us just go and praise your holy name every day this week, God. And ask you, Father God, what it is we should be doing in the name of Jesus every day. Bring us back Sunday, praising your holy name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah, they laugh. I know, yeah. And wasn't there other animals? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she knows it's her time. 